Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of Series 3 of Lawrence Plays Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 where we're starting to get to grips with the uh, the space elevator and so we've had we've done a bit of debating and a bit of arguing and a bit of let's just say let's just call it discussion about how we want to implement all of this and um, the the answer we've sort of come up with is, is with this sort of system down here on the ground and the idea of this is that we're going to have a separate station for each for, for each train that goes up to uh, up to Norbit through the through the elevator um, that allows it to get loaded with all of the appropriate things so for example this one here this is the one I've been working on which is why it's the uh, got the most of it and, it and it's a little bit different from all the others and I've been doing so I've been doing a little bit of thinking about this and this is how I plan to put this system together so here we've got a train stop for Astro pickup which means it'll pick up from here it'll take up all the stuff that's needed for the Astro science and the idea is that this warehouse here will be fed in much the same way that we've been feeding the rockets before. So we've we've talked about this in the in, in the past to a great extent. But basically, you get a signal down from from space, and then that's passes passed through here, and then any resource you're short of, like glass at the moment apparently, is then passed through the uh, the filter the um the, the, the system here by uh, through these through these gates, and then all, all and then all dumped into the rocket. And, and now we're also putting in low density structures and heat shield tiles. And so you get the, you get the idea. You put in all of the bits and pieces pieces that are needed at that on that for that particular system up uh, in, into the into the rocket the difference is that over here we're going to be just putting it into a warehouse and then a train will turn up here and then fill up and then when it fill, fills up it's going to head off round round the loops here go up and go up the elevator and drop it all off at the top so the train's going to be filled with a miscellaneous mix of whatever the space station feels like it needs at the time um, and the, and, the, and the way we when the way we're going to make sure the train um, departs even when uh, when when it fills up because this is this is another thing we had to think about a bit with the rocket, you can say launch when rocket is full, and then when it gets to no no available um, slots left in the rocket, it will consider that to be full and launch, even if not all of those slots are full. In with a train, the train expects them all to actually be completely full before it sets off, which is, to be fair, slightly more efficient because it means you'll uh, you'll you'll leave with the train completely full rather than with a few um, rather than with a few half stacks in it. But it means that if you put through, say, I don't know, if, if you have a stack of seven, if, if you have a pile of seventy-five uh, iron plates in here, they'll go into the train, and then until another twenty-five are put into that pile, it's not going to go because it's not going to be full. So what we've got here is a cunning system where all the all the content will pour out of the, out of here, go, go and, and make its way through these um, these 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 uh, splitters here, and though they're prioritised to send it on the inner two rows first, and so it'll go out from there up up here and, go, and be put into the into the two wagons of the train here. Fine. When those wagons fill up, and what that is, when they don't have any spare slots available, then stuff will start to back up along these two belts, and it'll, and, and eventually it'll clog up all the way to here. It'll clog up this bit, and then stuff will overflow from the warehouse onto the two outer ones here, and there, thereby, show, thereby putting something on, on these two. And we're then going to hook these up to a cable somewhere along here that says if 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 stuff then. Um, I think I'm, I'm going to need to change how this is wired up at the moment. This is sort of a very very simplistic version of it at the moment. But as you can see, what we could do. At the moment is we could just say as soon as you see anything send a signal to the, send that signal to the train and the train will depart now you need to make it a little bit more complicated than that for it to work nicely but that's the basic idea the basic idea is that when you see stuff on these two belts here that means the train has filled up and therefore you can't get more you you can't get any more stuff into it so it's time for it to leave and i think that's going to work quite nicely i, I used a very very similar system with spaceships back in in 0.5 because i had essentially i replaced the uh, the sushi rocket over here with a sushi spaceship that was being loaded in exactly the same way and so we had that similar sort of partial bypass system and so we knew when something ended up on the outer belt that the uh, that the spaceship was full and therefore it needed it needed to go so this this is a tried and tested solution. I mean, there are, I'm sure there are other ways to do it that are, that are probably significantly more complicated, and they might—they'll probably be slightly more efficient as well, because you might be able to come up with a system that um, ensures that only full stacks of stuff are put into the train, and then it departs when it's uh, when it's completely full. But I think this system is um, is, is 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 nice and simple, so I'm I'm, I'm uh, generally I, I'm I'm a fan of it. The other part of it is feeding the stuff into it, and so what we're going to have along here is essentially a main bus of all of the sort of things that we might want to ship up into space, and then each of those. Can be split off like this and passed up to the uh, passed up to the warehouse. Now, for some of these we might want to organise this a little bit more space efficiently, but there's only going to be maybe four or five things going up to the Astro Science, I think. So this should be plenty of space for them. We can we can it can in theory put five things into the bottom of this warehouse because the signals in the way there. We could we could move the signal down here somewhere and get an, and get and get a sixth one along the bottom, six in across the top. And if we got really really desperate, we might be able to squeeze in another one in the top here, maybe. 
Uh, yeah, another one, another two in the top here, rather. So there's potential for for get putting 14 different items into one of these where warehouses if if we need to. And actually, if it gets even worse than that, as long as you've got the space to bring all the belts up along here, which we might not actually, because there's there's room for six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, okay, so you can bring in 12 maximum across here, unless you do something f very, very funny down further down, because we've got these things arranged every 12. You could then do the same sort of thing as I did with the rocket, and have them all joined together onto splitters, so you've got multiple lanes being fed into the warehouse from uh, on, on one belt, and that, that'll save you a lot of space. <clears throat> Some fairly, some very clever packing would 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 be required in order to fit it into the sort of the twelve spaces you've got available around your uh, for, for each station. But I don't expect anywhere except for the mall to be receiving more than twelve different types of items. The mall is going to be a bit of an exception. The the that is the the mall up in space. This one up here, we have fifty four things on it so far. Um, because uh, so that's that's going to be a little bit trickier. Now, not all of those are going to be coming up from Norvis. So if we ha if we have a quick look down here, um, those barrels probably will be. All of these motors and circuits will be. The science packs will be. And the metals will be, and, and the rocket fuel. But then, as we get further down, we'll start to find things like vulcanite won't be. Um, they'll be shipped over separately. Um, and the in, in the emicite and so some of the more exotic materials like, like, like the holmium and the iridium and the beryllium those are going to come in separately but most of the other things are going to be brought in um in off off the off the not necessarily off the bus on norvis because we're improving how we're feeding but they're going to be coming in they're going to be being fed into into the warehouse for that and so that's that's for this one over here and that's why there's a lot more space available around this one because this is going to be the one that goes up to the the main um space bus and so it needs it needs a lot more space around it in order to wiggle all of the belts in and just somehow combine them all going down into the single into the single warehouse. So that's going to be fun, but you know that's what the game's all about. So for feeding this space, this this this, this bus down here for loading the loading the uh, the trains, what we're going to do is we essentially we're going to be bringing all of the things that are currently on the on being brought in by the train system to all of the train stations over here. Um, all these ones. Those the, that was the first lot, and then these were on second pit ground, and the third one's down here. They're all going to be fed directly out of the stations up here, and then passed down towards the uh, down down there with a, a brand new belt. So at the moment, we've got all these balances on the way out of the way, out of the um, the stations, which is a bit of a nonsense, if I'm being honest. This is this is this is kind of horrible. We're going to be improving the design of this later, but at the moment. We've got from this balancer, we've got one belt coming out this way of the, of the rare metals in this case, going off towards the, the main bus. This is the this is the the the, uh, the belts go all the way down here, down our main bus, and are then used for everything. And then a second belt that's coming across here like this, punching straight through here, and then coming down down through here, down 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 all the way down. And eventually, when when this is finished, this will this will feed all the way down here and onto the onto the into, into the system down here to load these load the new space trains. And I think this should work quite well. The um, the, the 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 belts down here. We're hoping we think that a blue belt should be plenty to keep all of those systems supplied. And if it's not, then we'll need to rethink it. Maybe put in an additional belt, but it'll probably be okay. We shall see. And there's a decent amount of space down here for all of these belts to come through. Uh, we put down lots of landfill because that's fine. We've got loads of landfill, um, and then we can just pass them all along here. We need we need to extend this a little bit further down at the bottom here because we were leaving a bit leaving a bit of extra space over my initial design because I'm incapable of planning ahead, but other people are capable of shouting at me. So that's all right. In the future, we will start going for this sort of station design, and this is for the this is for the um, the the aeroframe scaffolds, and this is a much better design because you've only got one warehouse instead of five, so it's better for UPS. And because we're using, um, however, these designs were before we were able to use the loaders, so we were using we had to use inserters to unload. So with a full row of inserters feeding from the, the wagon into the insert into the chest, that's only slightly faster than this system with blue belts. And if we needed it to go faster, we could upgrade these to green belts, and and then one of these would probably be faster than all six of these inserters at once. So being able to now use the loaders to empty the trains means we can go for this sort of system without having a massive problem, a massive decrease on the amount of throughput we're able to get. And then on the other side, we can use loaders to unload these warehouses as well. And that means we can use the loader, the warehouse itself as a balancer, and then just pour out as much as we need straight from these. So this is this is our our current gen design. These are all old and out of date and need upgrading. But when you come along and look at, for example, 
let's take this one as an example. There's 14,000, there's, there's almost 300 stacks of, um, of heat shield tiles in each one of these. So to come along and just go, yep, yeah, we're going to put in a single um, warehouse over here and, and, uh, and, and, and just put all the stuff in there. It's not practical. You can't, you can't do that because you, you can't put that much stuff in your inventory. It's just, it's just, it's just a bit ridiculous. So upgrading these to the, to the new design is going to be a bit of a pain. What we'll probably end up doing is cutting a gap in the middle and then having all the all these warehouses dump into one in the middle and then make sure the limits are set on here so that another train doesn't come out until there's no more than one warehouse's worth of stuff here. And then that way we can then, and then and once, once they've all sort of poured the stuff over, we can then come back later and adjust these over to be, to be, to be using loaders instead. But that's going to be a fairly big job. Um, and a rather frustrating one to do because it's going to be fiddly and and there's going to be a lot of stuff dumped out into the uh, into the logistics network. Now that shouldn't be too much of a problem because in theory we have all of these chests like this one um, that are requesting all of the all of the heat shield tiles out of the logistics network to make sure there aren't, aren't any in there. So this will self tidy itself. So it's not going to be it's not going to be so bad from that point of view, but it is going to be annoying and fiddly to do. So it's not it's not a job I look forward to, but. It's one we're going to have to do if we want to if we want to modernise all of these um, all of these systems. So yeah, that's 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 going to be essentially the design we're going for. We'll have um, we'll have a, a warehouse with with a feed going out to the main bus and then another feed going out to the to the train stations for all of the all of the uh, space stuff. And then yes, this needs to all be built out here with landfill and so on across here and just generally expand it. This needs to be finished. It's it's very very early um, early early stages at the moment, but. I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously confident that, that this will work quite nicely. Uh, how the others are going to do their trains is kind of up to them. This is this is how I want to do mine. Um, I've sort of said this is what I'm thinking. Um, you're welcome to borrow from these these lines if you if you want to do something similar. Um, but you know the the interesting part of playing a four player game is that other people might choose to do things a bit differently. Hopefully, whatever they choose will be reasonably compatible. But uh, I guess we'll find out as we go along. So, yes, the train will leave here, it'll rattle around the rails here, it'll go up the space elevator, it will appear in the space elevator in Norbit, it'll come out, out of here, and then in the case of the Astro one, it'll trundle all the way down the lines over here to to here, and then it'll unload into the into these two warehouses, and by then I will have adapted this to sort of to, to empty empty these warehouses across into these ones and into basically into my bus system up here. Now, with Astro, I don't expect to need an enormous amount of stuff. As you can see here, the, the only things we've got in this warehouse, the only things we're, we're requesting by delivery cannon at the moment, are coal, glass, beryllium, and light oil. So the light oil will probably will probably actually have the light oil in a fluid train, rather than then we can get away from barrels, because barrels are a nonsense. But that's, that, and that's going to need an additional station in here, but that's fine, there's plenty of room for that. Um, and an additional station down on Norvis to handle the fluids, but again, that's fine. Uh, the idea being, yes, we'll bring that, bring the uh, the light oil up here like that, and 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 have it available for for the uh, for the systems and and pass it up. Just, and then we can get rid of this barreling system over here. All of these other sort of ingredients again, the uh, the the glass and the and the coal are going to come up by train, as are the aeroframe scaffolds that we haven't really got being transported properly yet, and that's going to be that's something that's being a bit of a pain to get up and running. Um, and then anything and, and that that seems to be, I mean, the, I might find something else I need for um, Astro Science Four, but that's going to that's going to be about all that's required for this system. The the material science is going to be quite a lot more complicated, um, so Mike might do sushi trains like I've been describing with lots and lots of mixed materials on them all. Or he might end up deciding that he wants to have, the way he's built this makes it look like he wants to have a, a plastic train and an iron train and a copper train and so on and so on and so on. Uh, with lots and lots of different ones all bringing in their different, in different ingredients. and. I mean that is a possibility. He could do that. I suspect it's going. It's going. To, it's going to be less elegant. I feel um, and less interesting, but that, it's certainly a possibility. The bus over here. It, once again, we're going to we're going to have a drop off station. We we may end up using one of these existing ones up here, perhaps, um, or, or 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 alternatively, we might get rid of the uh, the landing pad here because we won't need that anymore, and we'll just bring a train in here and dump it straight across into here. There are. There are definitely possibilities. We shall see. We shall see. We shall see how how that goes. And um, and 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 uh, it should, but I don't think it's going to be difficult to to get the uh, the resources into the in, in, into the the landing pad area here. Um, especially if we if we decide we're okay to demolish some of this stuff up here, and Tristan can get his green circuits a less disgusting way. <laughs> So I think that pretty much covers how we're going to be using the elevator. Um, there's going, there's a lot of a lot of umming and erring and, and and sort of fiddling, and I'm I'm sure as we get on, we will discover lots more 
problems that we'll have to fix with my slightly naive suggestions. But um, I, I say naive simply because we haven't we haven't built it yet. So there's going to be there's going to be problems that we haven't thought of. But f fixing those as we go is going to be half the fun of Factorio, and I'll be able to talk about it in a future video. And maybe I'll even make a tutorial on it because it's it's, it's fairly interesting. <laughs> After doing all of that, I decided it was finally time to, act, to, you know, get on with a bit of that Astro 3 that I've been talking about for weeks and weeks now, and see and see if I can actually just, you know, get some stuff get some stuff going down here. So what did I do? Well, I am. Um, this is all. This is a little bit funny up here because I decided it'd be a good idea to put the Astro 2 catalog building and 3 catalog building next to each other so I could easily feed them onto the same belt and pass them off to the train here. So that's meant that this, this bit is sort of kind of upside down in that we've got the, the catalogue making at the top and then making the data card below it. it and it's, it's, it's a little bit funny but never mind. So for this one we've got uh, we, we've got a couple of the telescopes down here and we're making and we're making data cards and exactly this, and this is happily more or less the same as all of the other um, all of the other other levels of Astro so if we go up here to the, all the way up to the top here we are making three types of data that where we you put frames into into a telescope they come out of the telescope exposed you pass them into an astrometrics facility uh, along with memory cards and that turns them into the in, into data cards with the important data on them great Astro one easy Astro 2, slightly harder because then you need to use specific microwave telescopes and x-ray telescopes which are different. You feed in the, uh, the, the the frames, you get out the exposed frames, you feed them into the astro facilities down here and you get out the appropriate data cards. Great. Uh, it's also made a little bit harder because you need to put mirrors into here but they were being made somewhere else so that wasn't too bad. Astro 3, um, same ver next verse same as the first. Only a little bit harder, and so far a little bit worse because I haven't finished it. Um, yeah, so you, yeah, here, here we go. We're making, we're, we're doing the. Uh, what's, what's this one? This is radio telescope. So again, a different type of telescope. I talked about making these in the last episode, so I won't go over that again. But they're then fed down here, and we can gradually make the um, the the radio data cards, which go up here. And as you can see, we've made some. We've we filled this belt up a little bit. Lovely. We're also wanting to make a gamma ray um, data as well, and that's slightly harder because similar to the other one, that requires the gamma ray detectors. Um, which are made out of mirrors and beryllium and orange juice and unfortunately cryonite slush and cryonite slush is the thing we don't have any of at the moment because we don't have any cryonite. I built last week I built the facility to make it but until we start getting a supply of cryonite in we can't turn it into slushies so we can't make any of the, uh, the gamma ray detectors so we can't make gamma ray data. That's fine. I knew about that, and Tristan is off on Snowdrop making more uh, making more cryonite to keep us uh, keep us very very satisfied. But it's meant this has been a sort of well, I'll make it, and then later the resources will arrive and we'll be able to start you know actually doing stuff with it. So it's it, it's an, it, another in progress at the moment. The other part of um, of Astro Science Three, which I haven't done yet, um, is the dark matter and the negative pressure data. So the negative pressure data, this this is the one that requires those aeroframe scaffolds, and this is kind of why I want to get them being brought up from Norvis because it's going to be cheaper to make them down there because of productivity boosts. Uh, so we've got. And again, I, I talked about this last week as well, so you, uh, I apologise for showing you again. But over here, we've got the uh, the facility that is taking in the uh, the beryllium and plating it and making it into poles, and then and then uh, making combining it with uh, immersium plates and cryonite in order to make the uh, the aeroframe scaffolds. Why that requires cryonite, I'm not really sure, um, but it does. So yeah, we need we need the supply of that. So as I say, Tristan is off getting that ready for us, and hope the <laughs> it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem going on here because. On the one hand, I would like to uh, I'd like to have a spaceship go over to Snowdrop to pick up massive quantities of cryonite at a time and bring it all over to Norbit to send it down in a train, bring it bring it in, uh, bring it over here and and, and get it building and, and have it available for building this stuff. However, in order to get spaceships, we need the aeroframe uh, scaffolds up in Norvis to do the to make the research packs, and so we can't do one until we've done the other, but we can't do the other until we've done the one. So we're going to need to ship some over by delivery cannon first in order to get these running, in order to get that running, in order to get the science going, in order to get spaceships, and then happy days we can start going into the end game um, logistics systems. Um, unless Crestorio Two introduces some other new end game logistics system that I'm not <laughs> I'm not currently aware of, but I don't think it does. I think spaceships and uh, and space elevators are going to be very much end game. So yeah, the the other thing, I, in fact, the thing I missed out when I was talking about the elevator. So we'll touch on that now because I because I've thought of it, and if I don't talk about it now, I'll forget. Is that we're going to have a certain amount? We're going to have both upstream and downstream stuff with the elevator. So, on the, obviously, we're going to be taking up all of the resources for making the science packs from from these stations here, uh, up up, wait up up to the top, and then dumping them off 
in the stations up here, as, as I described. But then we're going to try and be clever about this. The trains on their way down will come along over here, and there'll be some pickup stations around here that are going to give the trains stuff. Stuff that's, that's in Norbit and wanted on Norvis. So at first, that's basically going to just be ores and things. So what, what, what I plan, we plan to... Oh dear, this is completely jammed up. Why is this completely jammed up? We've got too much heavy oil. Lovely. Um, what, we're gonna, what we're going to do is, is carry on processing the, um, the scrap in, in uh, Norbit because apparently you can't, you can't productivity module it even if, you, even if you do it on Norvis. So there's no point. And this make, does make it a bit denser because you can turn one scrap into about a 35% chance of something else. Uh, so it roughly thirds the amount, the number of items you have and scrap stacks up to 50 and so do ores. So if we take the, if we take the ores that come out of here and put them into a, into a train filling system over here, we can then pass that in, we can then send that back down to Norvis and then process it in, back into metals on Norvis, which will be significantly more, um, Productive because then we can put it through all of the all of the big systems we've built up down there that have all of the productivity modules and are just generally going to be so much better, so much more efficient. Just and we'll get so much more out of out of it. Is it worth it? Maybe. I mean, I, I'm not sure how much we get we produce up, how much metal we produce up here. But it does mean whatever, it, however much it is, it, we're going to get a bit more of it out. And I think I think it's I think it's worth doing. And it's it's an interesting little extra boost to do to the system as well. So I think that's worth doing. However, the other and much more interesting part of that, of the, of the sending stuff down to Norvis, is going to be in the future when we have spaceships. So instead of firing, instead of using the delivery cannons to just fire resources wherever they're needed directly, so we have a delivery cannon chest for each of the sciences up in, um, in Norbit, we'll have a delivery cannon chest for each of the sub-factories down on, on Norvis that needs them, we'll have a spaceship landing area and we're probably going to put them in up here somewhere north of the uh, north of the main bus or who knows, we haven't decided 100% yet but it's probably going to be in, 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 in go, we're probably going to have a spaceport across this area up here for spaceships to land and unload into into a train system that train system can then um potentially uh, will either send mixed trains down or we'll just go okay here's an entire train of beryllium but the point being we can we can have all the resources available over here then we'll f so we'll fill up those trains as they go back down again and that so they'll be able to take down a big load a load of beryllium a load of cryonite a load of vulcanite or or a mixed load of all of that and then those trains will automatically stop in these in these downstream stations here and unload onto these belts. And these belts will go up into a sorting system of some sort and then we'll have an array of stations ready to take that, those resources away. Where are we going to put those stations? I have to admit I'm not entirely sure at this point. But we'll have, we'll have stations ready to take away iron ore and co copper ore and beryllium and vulcanite and so on. All of those things we'll have, we'll have, we'll have the stations in here to take, to take them away to wherever in the factory they're required. So then when we come over here to my aeroframe manufacturing area, we're going to have, instead of dropping in the beryllium by delivery cannon here, we'll have a train turn up with it and drop off a train load of beryllium here. Uh, same with the cryonite, the same with the immersion plates. So we'll then be able to, then, I'll, then it'll come in in larger quantities. We'll be able to ship it over a spaceship load at a time. And an early game spaceship, well, I say early game, <laughs> the first spaceships you get are at least a warehouse. So that's the same size as a cargo rocket. It's 500 stacks, 500 delivery cannons equivalent. Oh, here comes a delivery. Speaking of delivery cannons, there we go. Um, it'll bring in 500 stacks in one go, and and that's that's five. It's more than five trains on on the ground here. So so you can get you can bring in much much larger quantities much more easily, and hopefully that'll allow us to have much larger quantities available, and therefore far more of this sort of processing going on, and everything will just be so much better, so much more efficient, and just generally, it'll keep things go. It'll keep things running in a much happier way. At least that's the hope. Yeah, so that that's that's some way off in the future, though. Uh, at the moment, we are struggling to keep up, even with just the delivery cannon delivery rate. But you know, we pro progress is, is is gradual and but does happen. Now I'm going to go. Where was I? Yes, I was. To, I was talking. Yes, I was talking about bringing all this stuff down here. So yeah, that's that's the the, the upstream and downstream for the, for those um, for those for those systems. Um, and then the the as when, when the when these play, when these frames are ready, they can be brought over to the station here, the aero scaffold drop, and brought down and put into put into the into the trains to go up again. I, and this time, I think I actually genuinely have covered everything I wanted to talk about about the elevators, and that's a good thing because I have been talking for well over 20 minutes now, and that's significantly more than half an episode, <laughs> and there's more to talk about yet. And there's a little bit more I should probably talk about before I finish. So, I mean, that's, uh, where was I? Yes, I was, oh yeah, I remember where I was. Yes, here we go. I was talking about, I was talking about the Astro catalogs. So we need to get these aeroframe scaffolds in, in and, and then the Astro, the astrometric data, which is easy because that's just produced up here, but from earlier types of data 
data cards. Now I can boost this one in the future to, to have it working with the um, with the the radio and X-ray data, well, the you know gamma ray and radio data that's coming out of these. But we'll get the system working first and um, get these working happily first, and then we'll think about expanding, improving that. Um, and that that'll produce the uh, negative pressure data. And once I've got that, then I can use that and gravitational lending data, which comes from up here somewhere. This one, in fact, uh, in order to make then make the dark matter data, and that will be my four data cards, and we can then feed them into here and make the science the science catalogs. Now the um, I, I may have I may end up having to extend this a bit or fill it fill it up with speed modules enough in, in order to get enough of them through, but that's not too much of an issue. I'm these are all these are, none of these problems are insurmountable. In fact, they're all fairly easy. I would say on the on the scale of space exploration ones, there will be there will be harder problems in the future, <laughs> probably when I get to Astro Four. Um, but yeah, it's going it's going to be easy enough to peel off some of these and send send them down that way. And that will be Astro Catalog Three. I've also done a bit of sort of bit of the tidying up that I was talking about in the last episode and then in the catch in, in the uh, summary videos where I was saying these are all the things that are wrong. Um, I managed to spaghetti in uh, loading and un battery loading and unloading systems for all these trains along here. And I'm sort of pleased and sort of horrified with this system. So as you can see, we're splitting off the bat the good batteries here, bringing them round under here and then feeding them into the locomotive, taking out the duff ones here, feeding them across and back up here. And in hindsight, I should have brought the. I should have moved all of this down one square. Had the um, the good batteries coming across here and coming up and being loaded in here, and the bad ones, bad ones being unloaded onto this level, because then I wouldn't have had this sort of this extra crossover bit here. And ooh, is that going to work? Yes, it is, because this will put them onto the top side, and so it will be able to pass them into that. Okay, that that is all right. Um, but yeah, in various other places, I've got the same sort of wiggle thing going on here. It's a little bit. It's a little bit of a mess, but. The system, but it will work, and that's the important thing. So this this is now going to allow us to keep all of these trains charged up and, and zipping around happily. We're also going to need to make sure all of the trains that we send down to Norvis are fully charged before they go down there, because at the moment, we don't have any systems for replacing the batteries down on Norvis. Maybe we should. Maybe we should have a train go that takes um, new batteries down and then loads up with duff batteries and brings them back up again. That's... A thing we can consider, but I feel like since all the trains that go onto Norvis will have come from Norbit, and we've got quite good infrastructure for passing uh, batteries around on on in Norbit for putting into putting into trains and, and passing around like that, we're probably going to be okay with, with just charging them up up here and then sending them down to and, and and then back up again on the same same batteries. I did a little bit of tidying up on the on the bus up here, so um, one of these I hadn't programmed the combinator here properly to keep the uh, aeroframe scaffold in this warehouse. So they could have, they might have carried on down here. I don't think they have, but there was a risk of it. There was a small risk of it happening. I also put in an extra two um, warehouses down at the bottom here to, to 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 in order to bring all of the miscellaneous stuff, in theory at least, down down out of, out of the uh, the ones where it's being fed out onto the bus. Uh, I've been partially successful with that. Um, in that, uh, uh, in, in that now we've got most most of it's down here, and the, these are all running running freely. But even so, even with that, I think that yeah, the, these the, we've still got two completely full warehouses of just of miscellaneous. To be quite honest with you, there's a, a huge numbers of train bits. There's loads of inserters, loads of warehouses. I'm not quite sure how we ended up with this many of all of these things up here. Uh, I mean, for example, over, we've got we've got our shopping list over here where we're asking for. Uh, 10 of each of these wagon types and locomotives. So I don't know why we've got hundreds and hundreds of them. We're asking for 10, sto 10 storehouses, 100 steel chests, 20 warehouses. So why why on earth have we got hundreds and hundreds of warehouses in here? I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I'm probably going to be blamed for this because that seems to be what usually happens. But uh, yeah, we just seem to have crazy amounts of all of these things up here. Um, and now... I would normally I would say it's not the end of the world. We'll get through them eventually, but this is too many. We're not going to get through all of this stuff. This is crazy. Um, but oh well, it's all been made now. It's up here. What can you do? Well, I guess the answer is you put it in a spaceship and you go off to make your next massive outpost with it all. But still, it's 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 a bit ridiculous. Um, and another is and and there isn't room for another warehouse down the bottom here. I don't think because it would need to be there, and that interferes with the right. I mean, actually, to be fair, it could be put there. We could put one in, in there, and then we, then that would, would be would be okay. Um, but yeah, it's we have a lot of, a lot of stuff up here. I also noticed that we've now got electronic components up here. Was that me? I don't remember. Uh, yes, I think it probably was because oh, oh no, it wasn't. No, this, this was this was Mark, I think, because Mark has now got us making um, ah yes, yeah, so we're making the um, these things, energy control units. These have suddenly been required everywhere for all the more advanced stuff we're building. So over here, 
Marker started to make wide area beacons. Now this is re this is really exciting because the wide area beacons are enormously powerful. A normal beacon, uh, which you've, you've seen us using these, and I've been lamenting not, and, and I've been lamenting all of our builds that don't have them. These allow you to put eight modules into them, and they eat, and um, and they push fifty percent of their of their effectiveness over. So that means you can put in uh, eight speed modules, and it'll be equivalent to putting in four speed modules directly in a machine. So if we go off of the, the tier threes, which you do seem to be able to make at the moment. Um, that will give you a 160% speed boost just out of, out, out of one of those. It's got a coverage area of uh, three tiles out from itself. So that means because it's three by three, that means you've got a nine by nine coverage area with a three by three mod, uh, beacon in the middle that you can't use. So basically you, you can put that on a number of machines like this. The wide area beacon, as its name, name suggests, covers a wider area. So that pushes out 14 tiles away from it, which is huge. Look at that. That's that's incredible. With this, you can you can you can if if you, with a careful design, you can cover an enormous number of machines. And not only that, it also takes more modules in it. You can put 15 modules in it. So that means you're getting an effective effectively seven and a half modules worth of oomph out of it. And that means with with again with the, with the uh, tier three speed modules, that's 300% speed boost. So your machines will run at four times their normal speed just for having one of these near them, and that's inc that's amazing. That means that for, by putting one of these in, you can put it out. You only have to put out a quarter of the number of whatever machine it was you're using, and that's not that's not everything. Also, dur during the last stream, I built up this little area down here. Which it's a little bit of a thing I've just squeezed onto the side of the bus, but. We've got over here. We've got uh, this system here making the tier four assembly machines. Now these are assembly machines, but better, um, as you can imagine. So you got you got the tier zero burner assembly machines, tier one assembly machines, which are uh, so you go from a speed of half to a speed of still a speed of half, but this one runs off electricity. And you go from the tier one to the tier two, which goes up to a speed of 0.75, um, and you can put modules in this one tier 2 to tier 3 you can put more modules in it goes to speed of 1.25 and then you get with the tier 4s you get up to a crafting speed of 5 so that's four times faster and I think you can put more even more modules in them I'll have to check that in, in a moment we'll check that together that'll be fun um, but to make those you require all kinds of exotic stuff so you need you need the tier 3 we've got what they call telescopic ingredients uh, telescopic um, t generation uh, there's, a, there's a term for it I forget what it is but that means in order to make a tier 1 assembly machine you need a tier 0 to make a tier 2 you need a tier 1 you need a tier 2 to make a 3, you need a 3 to make a 4, but just to make things harder, you also need the furnaces. And so to make a furnace, you need a tier 1 furnace to make a tier 2 furnace, or a stone to make a steel. You need a steel to make an industrial, and then you need an industrial furnace to make a tier 4 assembly machine for goodness knows what reasons, but you apparently do. And so this is why we've got this little column of machines stacked up here. And of course, all of these require different ingredients to make them as well. So to make a st stone furnace, it's just a pile of stones. Easy. A steel furnace requires bricks and steel. An industrial furnace requires presumably red circuits and uh, and um, and heat shield tiles. Yes, as well as the previous two. Oh, and steel as well. So we've got all of those being fed in, and a similar similar sort of thing with the uh, with the assembly machines as well. So you can see this has been a somewhat complex system to put together. We also needed immersion beams and immersion gears. Now the gears were already being made here conveniently by Tristan for the uh, for the more advanced belts, uh, but I, and I was able to start making beams here and then we feed those, feed those through. So those are now available for the this. And conveniently, we needed those immersion beams and gears over here because the other things I was making are these um, advanced chemical plants, which are again. So with the advanced chemical plant, you go from um, this one, which is is a, a crafting speed of one to a crafting speed of eight, so eight times faster. And you go from putting in two, no, three modules, I think, up to significantly more. And again, we'll investigate that in a moment. Um, and also up here, where I've been building these um, advanced furnaces, which are, again, like a furnace, but better. And they require steel beams. And that's that seems to be the slow part of this process because there's no power for this beacon because no, somebody put that somebody put that in. Who was it? It was Tristan put the beacon in here, but didn't put a um, but didn't put a, 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 a pylon next to it to give it power. Uh, and that, as you can see, is a normal beacon, and as, as is that one. So if we look at this one, you can see here we've got a speed of um, plus 32% because it's got those four modules in it. If we look at this one, oh, it's got productivity modules in it as well, so it's harder to say. But um, despite the productivity modules, it's still got a speed of plus 40% as well. Uh, and that's the effect of the beacon. So, the re the, yes, all of these advanced machines, both the, uh, the beacons and all of these ones that I've just been talking about here, were to enable Mark to set up this system down here for making red circuits. Now he's done a lot of underground belts here to which I mean it sort of looks 
I don't know. I don't, I don't like this look, this look where you where you just space out the underground belts as far apart as possible. Yeah, it's a nice idea because it allows you to fit more into the space, and you, can, you don't have to worry about things getting in each other's way and stuff like that. And and if you want to have something going off to the side, then you you just have to actually. Then it's not 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 that, but. Yeah, you. Uh, it makes it harder to read what's going on, and when you're coming along to make a summary video, it's nice if you, if you can tell at a glance what's going on, basically. But, the point being, we are, um, yeah, over here, we are bringing in all of the ingredients required for red circuits. Uh, so, presume, uh, oh, and, and green circuits as well. So, we're bringing in the, uh, the copper and the stone... Uh, stone bricks, yes, the copper and stone bricks up here to make the uh, the stone slabs and oh, we're bringing in copper ingots to make copper plates. Excellent, that's even better. And then we can feed in a belt. Oh, that's this is nice. You can feed in the belt of um, plates into one of these machines. It just pours out the um, the cables here, pour, uh, and then that and then it goes into here along with a, a full belt of of of, of these uh, of the plates and and uh, that fills out that stuff. I almost. I wish I could see this running. I wonder if he's put a limiter on here. He has. Excellent. So that means I can come in here. This this isn't going to this isn't going to be long term because this is just going to dem this is just to demonstrate the system working because I think this is going to look absolutely awesome. But you can see up here we're pouring in the stone bricks and the copper ingots here. A flood of these things coming out and then these machines are just making enormous quantities of the cables and um, an absolute flood. Look at this this is this is incredible. We've got these machines are despite the fact we've got we've got a yellow we've got sorry we've got a blue belt's worth being pouring out of this machine but despite that it's Ooh, that number is going down ever so slightly. So yeah, this, this one machine with the tier 3 modules in it and being affected by this wide area beacon is capable of producing a blue belt's worth of green circuits on its own. That is amazing. Or practically a blue, a blue belt. It's, it's not quite, as you can see, because this number is going down slightly, but that is immense. That is, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, we've got such such a level of throughput here. This is This is producing... Well, you look at that. Look at that number of products finished over there. You can see the numbers rocketing upwards. So that that that's amazing. Um, and this all came from me saying, "Oh no, we're out of red circuits in the last video um, because they were being used for by lots and lots of different places. It, they were getting used up in massive quantities for sure, um, and we we we'd run out of them." So. Now we've got this this system up here making enormous quantities of green circuits. They're all then pouring down here. Uh, there's another set of machines down here. I'm just gonna. Un un unlimit this one as well, so we can we, again we can so again we can see this one this, this whole thing running. Again, we're making the copper cables in significant quantities, should we say, uh, pouring out of these two machines, and uh, you don't need quite as many for the uh, for the red circus, I don't think. Um, and we'll have the pl well, there'll be oh we've got the electronic components coming in here as well, um, and 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 the and the green circuits from okay here's here's the belt of green circuits coming in, so we're feeding in loads and loads of stuff here, and that means that. This is not quite as crazy a rate of them. We don't have each of these machines producing an, an entire blue belt's worth, but yeah, as you can see, this machine is not is 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 quite happy at, at happily emptying itself. But presumably, between all of these, I mean, I, I trust I trust Mark's judgment when it comes to this sort of thing. This is probably going to be about right to basically saturate, more or less saturate, either slightly more, slightly less. I don't, I wouldn't like to say exactly, but it'll be about right, about right for this blue belt that's coming out of here from these five machines. But again, all covered by the uh, by this beacon, and you you can see you can see the highlight that pops up as as I as I mouse over it. We're covering a all of all of all of these machines in this area are covered by this speed beacon. It's just giving them such a boost to their construction construction speed. Oh, and there's blue circuits being done down here as well. Uh, oh no, no, there isn't. There will in the future when we have a supply of holmium available. There will be blue circuits being made here through the through the holmium recipe. So that that'll be nice. And again, that's the thing. That's that's going to be waiting for us to have. Um, have the spaceships bringing the holmium from the holmium planet over to here, ready to be processed in, uh, in into the blue circuits in when we have massive quantities of it available. Um, it's a it's a relatively low priority, I would say, because we do have blue. We are okay for blue circuits, I think. We'll have a look at that in a second. We're basically okay for blue circuits. We just want to churn, but we want to be able to churn through them um, at a decent rate at some point. So yes, I was going to I was going to look at the number. Of, we can so you can get four modules into one of these in, into one of these machines. I think it's three in the old style. That's uh, these on. Where's, where's the other red circuit production area? Uh, th yeah, three. Oh no, it's four in these as well. Okay, so it's not more modules. It's just a much faster machine, um, and that means you don't need as many modules because if a machine runs four times as quickly, you only need a quarter of as many modules to fill up machines to go to the same to, to keep you keep your production at the same speed. So that's a, that's a big saving from that.
Um, then with that, probably, yes, there, there we go. So now from this, this this was the previous, this previously was producing all the red circuits with them being chucked into here. This train should probably be told to get lost, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, now we're passing all of those red circuits over here to be made into blue circuits through the old method, the one that doesn't use holmium, uh, just brings in um, rare metals and sulfuric acid, but twice as much of everything, I think. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's, it's produced, as you can see, we've got plenty of blue circuits from the system. That's okay. Um, now uh, it was it was the red circuits that were the, were the real problem, and the main circuit, the main reason the red circuits were were the real problem um, is because we're bringing in enormous numbers of them here to make them into the memory cards that we need to do all the all the science production, and so now we've got the science cards are being produced steadily. Um, there's some catching up to do here, but we will hopefully now produce them fast enough to keep up with the with the rate they're being used. Right, I think I'd better stop talking. I was wasn't meaning to talk well well, I wasn't really meaning to talk about what Mark had been up to quite so much in this in this video, but it was very but it was interesting and relevant to what I'd been saying about the other things I'd been finding, what I've been up to. So I so yeah, so I don't regret that. <laughs> um, and in tomorrow's video I shall talk about the sort of the other things that we've been getting up to because there's there's still quite a bit more to talk about. Um, but I think this is this is going to be a good place to split the video. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we shall be streaming not this Monday because two of us are on holiday, but the Monday after, um, so yeah, just over a week away, we shall be carrying on with this and solving, trying to solve all of the problems that I've been talking about today and just basically trying to get this elevator running because I don't think we've actually put a single train through it yet. <laughs> we've, got it, we've got it built and we've got it linked, but we haven't actually put any trains through it yet. On Wednesday, I shall be starting, no, not Wednesday, a week on Wednesday, the Wednesday where I'm actually streaming and I'm back from holiday, I shall be starting the um, the XCOM 2 run through, so uh, that's going to be exciting and deadly and good fun, I'm sure, I'm, 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 I'm hopeful. Um, so if you haven't already made yourself a character and submitted it on Discord, so um, there's a video on the channel of how to do that, but make sure you make, make, make yourself a custom character, submit it on Discord, and I'll recruit them into my army and we'll go off and see how well they, how well they fare against the alien menace. <laughs> As usual, I should be trying to get a Factorio video out every Tuesday. Um, it, it's a little tight at the moment because, as I say, I'm going away at the weekend. But um, I'm I, I'm cautiously optimistic there'll be one this Tuesday, and we'll see what happens the Tuesday after. Um, I don't want to make any promises, but I'll I'll do my best. Uh, and of course, there'll be catch-up videos not not next Thursday, not not next Friday and Saturday because there won't have been a stream to catch up from. But the week after, as always. So, thank you, thank you again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed everything. Please check out the channel sponsor, tree4.be. And also a shout out to Alexander again for, uh, as a thank you for, for giving me this uh, the microphone that you can hear, you can hopefully hear my voice much more clearly and nicely through. I've had it for a few weeks now. It's, it, it seems to be working well. And yes, we still have him to thank. So, thanks again for that. So, I shall see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye. <laughs>